Hi, it's Katrina. From controversial texts with inscriptions to lost settlements in the Amazon, here are nine mysterious archaeological discoveries. Number 9. Jordan Lead Codices It is possible that a discovery has been found that may rival that of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Seventy books or codices reportedly made of impure lead pages were allegedly found in a cave less than 100 miles where the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered. This incredible collection is now in the hands of a Bedouin farmer and trucker named Hassan Saeda, who says that he inherited the treasure from his great-grandfather. These books were reportedly found in small niches carved into the cave walls near the hot springs of Hamad Gader, a religious site for thousands of years. These books date back around 2,000 years, and unlike the Dead Sea Scrolls written on papyrus or parchment, these are in book or codex form, which began with the rise of Christianity. Now known as the Jordan Codices, they have eight or nine pages each, and some have yet to be opened. One of the most remarkable has a cover embossed with a face, which many interpret to be a bearded young man with a crown of thorns, making it possibly the first portrait ever of Jesus Christ, maybe even done by people who knew him. For the books that have been opened, many of the pages show pictures rather than text. There is a small amount of script, but so far no one has been able to interpret it. Several Dead Sea Scrolls mention a metal book, a very holy object with the portrait of the Holy One on its cover. The Biblical Book of Revelations mentions sealed books with sacred information. However, these books have now been under scrutiny as to whether or not they are authentic. Many researchers, including from the Israel Antiquities Authority, the Jordanian Archaeological Department, and experts involved in a 2012 BBC investigation have written off the codices as fake. However, Hassan Saeda and other researchers fully believe that they are authentic. In 2016, several tests done in independent laboratories confirmed that the lead the artifacts are made from can be traced back to the Romans. But was the lead reused by cunning forgers, or is it real? Several professors say that they are modern fakes. The controversial elements are the inscriptions that still haven't been translated. Saeda has allowed many independent laboratories to analyze some of the codices, and they say that they have been able to interpret parts of it, and that everything points to them being created by an early Messianic Jewish sect closely allied with the Christian Church, and that these books contained sacred information that was not meant to be opened. These scholars and lab analysts claim that there is a campaign to suppress these artifacts, but that it is important to continue to study them. Number 8. Tomb of the Silver Hands In the 18th century, archaeologists found numerous fascinating discoveries in and around the ancient tombs of Volci in Italy, which are located roughly 75 miles northwest of Rome. Included among the discoveries are some Etruscan burials dating back between the 7th and 4th centuries BC. These burials were once popular tourist attractions, but declined in popularity during the mid-19th century and were closed up. In recent years, archaeologists attempted to relocate them and failed. But during the process, they made some dazzling discoveries in their own right, including two large funerary complexes and over 20 small burials and tombs. The Tomb of the Silver Hands is arguably the most fascinating of all the newer finds. Discovered in 2012 by a team led by archaeologist Carlo Cassi, it consists of three separate chambers that were likely the burials of a noble Etruscan family. While one of the chambers was emptied by looters at some point, the others contained an impressive array of artifacts, including shiny black pottery possibly dating as far back as the 7th century BC, bronze horse harnesses and chariot remains, and two remarkably preserved silver hands with gold traces on the fingers and fingernails. The hands were once part of a spiralaton, which Cassie described as a kind of wooden funerary dummy that represented the dead and guarded his or her soul after the body had been cremated. While these statues often represented warriors or noblemen, Cassie believes that this one was of a woman, quite possibly reflecting an unusually elevated status that the Etruscans may have afforded to high-ranking women in the ancient world. Number 7. The Giant's Graves Throughout modern-day Sardinia are a series of megalithic tombs known as the Giant's Graves or the Giant's Tombs. Built by the Bronze Age Nuragic Civilization, they date back to around 1800 BC. There are around 800 altogether and they were constructed in various styles, including in the shape of a bull's head and featuring depictions of male sex organs. 
The Naragic culture was very religious, leading many researchers to believe that the society was theocratic, in other words, that it was led by priests or other religious authorities, and perhaps consisted of various cults dedicated to different deities. A single Naragic group inhabited Sardinia during the first millennium BC, followed by a number of groups that emerged before or during Roman times, and which competed for control over land and resources. It's rare for archaeologists to find signs of settlements near the giants' graves, but it appears as though the sites were used for religious and ritualistic purposes. Some experts also believe that the graves were built to delineate territorial boundaries between tribes, or for cosmological reasons. Whatever the case, these types of graves appear to have fallen out of practice by 1150 BC. Number 6. Medieval Horde Recently, an archaeologist trying to learn more about a large coin hoard discovered in Poland in 1935 discovered another one. Adam Kadzierski was interviewing locals to try to document the location of the original hoard for a book. He was chatting with the local priest and a farmer who told him a local rumor about another treasure collection being buried somewhere nearby. With the help of a metal detector, the archaeologist located the suspected site of the buried hoard in a cornfield. Once he and his helpers realized that they'd stumbled upon an extremely valuable cache, they called in local firefighters to guard the site until the excavation was complete. Inside a ceramic vessel was a medieval hoard brimming with silver ingots, gold rings, and thousands of silver coins. One gold ring contains the unique Cyrillic inscription, Lord, may you help your servant Maria. This ring most likely belonged to royalty, perhaps a princess. Meanwhile, most of the coins are silver denarii that were minted during the late 11th or early 12th century, bearing an image of a large cross. The collection also consists of German, Czech, Danish, and Hungarian coins. Medieval gold jewelry is extremely rare in Poland. The items may have been passed down to a duke by his grandmother, daughter of Vladimir the Great. Researchers suspect that this and the past hoard's discovery show that the village is more historically important than they previously realized. Their next step is to analyze and date the items, which will tell more about their significance and who they likely belong to. Number 5. Ancient Goddess Statue While plowing a field on his family farm in Mexico City with plans to plant watermelons, a man named Cesar Cabrera noticed a mysterious limestone object poking up through the soil. With the help of some friends, he eventually unearthed the item, which turned out to be a life-size statue of a woman, which may represent the Huastec goddess of lust. The sculpture is adorned with a large headdress and other ornate embellishments. Experts believe it is at least 500 years old, and they agree with Cabrera's assessment that it is of Huastec origins, although they believe that the woman may represent a queen or another elite female. The Huastec civilization is one of the lesser-known ancient cultures that once lived in parts of modern-day Mexico. Between looting and a lack of research, this society remains enigmatic even in the eyes of experienced scholars. But the Huastec thrived for centuries, particularly along the country's southeastern coast, despite their scarce presence among today's historical knowledge. They were absorbed into the Aztec civilization long before Spanish conquistador Hernán Cortés and other Europeans arrived starting in the early 16th century. Historians believe that Huastecs were depicted as barbarians and drunkards because their conquerors wanted to justify subduing them. But their artifacts tell a different story, including one of a culture that celebrated powerful women, making the statue Cabrera discovered especially valuable. Number 4. Royal Dye Israeli archaeologists recently made a groundbreaking discovery at a site called Slaves Hill in Timna, roughly 137 miles south of Jerusalem a cloth fragment bearing evidence of a purple dye possibly dating back to the reign of the biblical King David. The pigment is reportedly more valuable than gold, and the discovery marks the first time the color has been found on textile from that particular period in the region. In antiquity, purple attire was associated with the nobility, with priests, and of course with royalty, Israel Antiquities Authority expert Dr. Nama Sukenik told the BBC. Adding, the gorgeous shade of the purple, the fact that it does not fade, and the difficulty in producing the dye, which is found in minute quantities in the body of mollusks, all made it the most highly valued of the dyes, which often cost more than gold. Both the Jewish and Christian Bibles mention purple, including as the shade used in garments worn by Jesus, King David, and King Solomon. The color immediately attracted our attention, but we found it hard to believe that we had found true purple from such an ancient period, said Professor Erez ben Yosef from the Archaeology Department at Tel Aviv University. This is the first time the dye was found on fabric, which dates back to roughly 1000 BC, around the time when King David ruled. Number 3. Early Mosque 
The remnants of an early mosque were just discovered in Israel, according to archaeologists from the University of Jerusalem, who say that it may date back to the earliest decades of Islam. It was found in the northern city of Tiberias, just south of the Sea of Galilee. The mosque was likely constructed around 670 AD, about a decade after the Prophet Muhammad's death. It's of particular importance to archaeologists who know of several remaining mosques from that time period but can't examine them because they are still in use today. The discovery affords experts the rare opportunity to study the beginnings of Islamic architecture and, according to Katya Citrin Silverman, reflects an early tolerance among Islamic leaders for other faiths. Tiberias had already been a Muslim city for several decades at the time the mosque was built, and was also a centuries-long center for Jewish learning and life. It was also home to several Christian sites along the shoreline prior to its conquest by Muslim armies in 635 AD. The city saw considerable growth under Islamic rule, yet little was known about this until relatively recently. Excavations in Tiberias have seen an uptick in recent decades, resulting in increased discoveries throughout the ancient metropolis, including a Byzantine church and a Roman theater overlooking the sea. IAA archaeologist Gideon Avni explained in an AP interview that the recently discovered mosque helps to shed light on when it became standard protocol for Muslim builders to ensure that their houses of worship face Mecca. Experts originally believed, based on past excavations, that it may have been used as a Byzantine marketplace and later converted into a mosque, but they are now rethinking that idea. But after taking a closer look, it appears as though the mosque was built and used as one throughout its entire existence. The building's dimensions and other features closely match other mosques from the period, indicating that it was constructed solely for worship. Archaeologists also noticed that Muslims conquered cities in the Levant and Mesopotamia gradually rather than suddenly. They noted that the mosque they discovered likely stood alongside a Byzantine church and local synagogues, demonstrating the religious tolerance archaeologists mentioned. Number 2. Rare French Portrait Last year, an English auction house sold a miniature portrait that it mistakenly thought was of Sir Walter Riley, the English adventurer and explorer. But the observant art dealer who purchased it last year, Philip Mould, realized that this assessment was wrong and that the portrait is actually a rare depiction of Henry III of France, a controversial French king who was known for cross-dressing. Historians have long debated if Henry III was actually a transvestite and possibly a homosexual, or if it was a rumor spread by his enemies. It was often even said during his lifetime that he liked to dress in women's clothing, he hated stereotypical manly things of the day like hunting and war, and that most of his male court favorites wore their hair long and curled with bonnets like women. However, the political climate of the day was extremely dangerous and there were many violent wars of religion. He was ultimately murdered and later on was almost lost to history after the French Revolution. Philip Mould purchased the item without ever seeing it, probably for a fraction of its true value, and hopes to cash in by selling it to the Louvre. He quickly identified the man in the portrait, and when he had an expert examine it, he learned that the signature of French court painter Jean de Court and the year 1578 were written on the reverse side, proving its authenticity. In an interview with the press, Mould called the artwork a French national treasure and said that he felt it was fitting to offer the Louvre the first right of refusal on the piece, since it was likely created in the once royal residence that the museum is housed in today. Number 1. Pre-Columbian Settlements Until relatively recently, scientists mistakenly believed that the Amazon rainforest was a paradise that remained mostly untouched by humans. But archaeologists are increasingly disproving this widespread misconception, including with the 2018 discovery of 81 pre-Columbian settlements in the Amazon's Tapajos Basin, a region previously thought to be historically largely uninhabited. The sites, which were identified through satellite imagery, ranged in size from just 100 feet wide to 47 acres. These findings show that the area was not only inhabited, but that millions of people probably lived there. Like numerous other discoveries of ancient settlements throughout the Amazon jungle, the villages are helping experts understand what the region was like before Europeans arrived. The idea that the Amazon was a pristine forest, untouched by humans, home to scattered nomadic populations, we already knew that was not true, said lead study author Dr. Jonas Gregorio de Sousa. The big debate is how populations were distributed in pre-Columbian times in the Amazon. Thanks for watching! Which discovery was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below and remember to subscribe if you haven't already! See you soon! Bye!